Wars are fought by adults, but they destroy childhoods. At Save the Children, we focus on what matters. Children in the U.S. and around the world are facing unspeakable hardships from war, poverty, and the climate crisis. This giving season, your gift will be matched five times to help more at-risk children. That means a gift of $5 will become $25. A gift of $10 will become $50. Donate now at savethechildren.org. It's Monday. It's December 18th. And the word of the day is skinfluencer, which is what I like to call the heroes of OnlyFans and Pornhub and all the other places we get our delightful adult content. Used in a sentence, cheers to the skinfluencers, the gifters who keep on giving. Okay, that is the creepiest way to validate sex workers since buying their underwears. Thank hey, you, Heath. Nice. It's one thing not to sell them to me, Eli. It's another thing to bring it up on the air. <laughs> That's fair. I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm No Illusions. I'm Heath Enright. And broadcasting delayed from America's Far Center, we are the Skeptocrats. On this week's episode, Rudy Giuliani just needs a little help till Friday. Ben Shapiro really <laughs> commits to the it was for research excuse when his wife catches him watching porn. And everything is going wrong for Elon Musk. He's yep. really Elon Musking it up really hard right now. <laughs> but first, the rest of the intro music. Joining me for headlines tonight are my fellow skeptic rats, no illusions, and Eli Bosnick. Gentlemen, the birth of Jesus Christ is coming right up in four months or six months mm -hmm. or nine months sure. or ten months. Yeah. We're not sure. What's your favorite Christmas thing? Uh, I love it on Christmas morning when you wake up and you're like, I don't have to stress over Christmas shit anymore. That's nice. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a good one. Um, I like adults who have to defend the Christmas story, the movie. <laughs> as, as time goes on, that gets more fun. Yeah, yeah, okay. In our lead story tonight, Rudy Giuliani had a big sad, so we have a big happy. And look, we're used to his comeuppance. Right. Rudy's been a walking lump of schadenfreude since 2020. And if he weren't such a deeply terrible human, we'd probably be numb to it by now. But we're not, which we rediscovered no. on Friday when a federal <laughs> jury ordered him to pay the eye bulgingly massive sum of one hundred and forty eight million dollars to two Love Georgia this. election workers. He falsely accused of ballot fraud repeatedly in public including a state Senate hearing. Yep. And I'm sure he's completely lost track of all the state and federal courts where he's not allowed to practice law anymore. So he went ahead and hired the bad guy from the fifth element to be yep. his lawyer. He did. <laughs> At which point the entire internet was like, hold on, I think that's actually the bad guy from the fifth <laughs> element. Okay, podcast listener, if you haven't Googled Rudy Giuliani lawyer yet, you absolutely need to. But in case you're driving or just don't have the opportunity, he's being represented by what appears to be a full grown man unknowingly wearing like a baby toupee, like a baby <laughs> toupee, but like on the front. <laughs> Like at the front, the like where front. Two, yes. and, and he's very clearly, he could have a full head of hair. He's not bald. He's shaved his yes. head and then just put this, left this, it's pretty weird shit. He could have centered it at least on the top of head area. Sure. Like, a lot of work went into this crazy thing. <laughs> I bet he wins a ton of cases because the other side goes, hey man, what the fuck's on your head? And then he goes, that's, ch you're not allowed to yell at that. And the lawyer's like, technically you're not allowed to lower that. Clack, clack, the client's off. Yeah. The rest of the other team's argument is just talking about that ridiculous <laughs> thing. And then he like sneakily wins the case by talking yeah, about it. Must be. So anyway, so so yeah, this is the story of Ruby Freeman and Wandria Shea Moss, a mother and daughter who served as election workers for the state of Georgia in 2020. Uh, they were among the most notable victims of Team Trump's conspiracy mongering and became so after Giuliani shared a video of the two on the then bearable website Twitter, along with the accusation, quote, watch. It's at all caps. So watch 
<laughs> Video footage from Georgia shows suitcases filled with ballots pulled from under a table after supervisors told poll workers to leave room and four <laughs> people stayed behind to keep counting votes, end quote. I feel like he added information that's not in that. Right, yeah. <laughs> B- based on that convoluted, thrice-removed, fourth-hand pseudo-accusation about a video that most decidedly did not even show that, the two women's lives were thrown into chaos for years. It's so stupid. The video might as well be the DuckTales intro with these women just diving into a ballot silo and swimming around and blowing bubbles. Okay, but to be fair, now their life has been thrown into $74 million a piece. I mean, I'd withstand a lot of mean tweets for $74 million. That's all I'm saying. If they get it, yeah. Um, It's worth noting, by the way, too, that, that Giuliani didn't just drop this grenade and run. He repeatedly accused these two by name of involvement in the bullshit conspiracy to steal the election, which he knew, of course, was nonsense to begin with. He testified to the Georgia Senate that Freeman and Moss were passing each other USB flash drives like, quote, vials of heroin or cocaine, end quote, in order to steal votes from Trump. When asked about this in a congressional hearing, Moss said that her and her mom were passing candy. God, there's so much stupid and evil to unpack there in this little bit. Just for starters, Giuliani saw a video of black person uses hand to pass object, and he was like, heroin, yes, yep, cocaine, yep. heroin. first thing. Mm-hmm. But also, it's the USB flash drive in addition to being heroin and cocaine. And he thinks you eat those <laughs> the drives or they transport and, them in vials. Yeah, very confusing. <laughs> And he thinks the votes exist in their entirety on little drives and that the drives with Trump votes, which were like separate, like all the votes for Trump got put on one type of drives and just that pile of drives was being eaten by. Yeah, they were taking bites out of them. Yeah. Genuinely, I think maybe the biggest takeaway we have from the 2020 election is that most Republicans have no idea how voting works. Like, none. (laughs) Yeah, or cocaine. Vials? Who the fuck gets their cocaine in vials? What the fuck are you talking about? (laughs) Anyway. Rudy, when he was a young man, got it at the pharmacy. Sure, okay. Oh, no, that's true. Yeah, right, back in his day. So, needless to say, after Giuliani's spurious accusation, Freeman and Moss were subject to constant harassment from maggots around the country. They received a steady stream of death threats, racist attacks, and public harassment. Uh, Freeman testified in court that she was terrified any time she had to use her own name in public. Moss's 14-year-old son was targeted online and over his cell phone. One email showed in court said, quote, we're coming for your family. And another said, quote, Miss Ruby, the safest place for you right now is in prison. And otherwise, you will swing from the trees. And cool, 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 cool. So, just to be clear, if you're sending that to a woman of color, whatever you think you're sending that thread over, you're not. You're doing it for racism. That right. is the racism yep. of that Unless you're doing. Unless you think you're doing it for racism. And, and to be clear, I'm skipping over messages with actual racial slurs in them, but needless to say, they got plenty of those as well. Anyway, naturally, the victim sued. And the judge ended up issuing a default judgment in August against Giuliani because he kept refusing to comply with discovery requests. Because, of course, he's facing a lot worse than monetary damages over his involvement in this shit. And turning over documents related to the conspiracy to create this conspiracy would probably be super duper damning in, say, the racketeering charges he faces in the same state over the same thing. So... All this jury was deciding was how much he'd have to pay in damages, and their answer seems to have been how much you got. Um, <laughs> the, the staggering sum includes $75 million in punitive damages, $20 million each for emotional distress, and another $16 million each for defamation. And when Giuliani and Zorg from the Fifth Element did a quick <laughs> press conference, Rudy almost forgot to not confess right, so during close. that moment. It's such a short moment. He said... Obviously, we're going to be appealing because 148 million is a crazy number. So, uh, wait. Also, also, I didn't. I'm not guilty of that. Also, right, I not say- guilty. <laughs> just to be clear. And that's when Zorg pulled him away and shut down the little impromptu yeah. press cut. Also, if anyone would like to buy my lawyer the rest of his hair, we've started a GoFundMe. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now, of course, you might be thinking, "Well, I seriously doubt Giuliani has that kind of money." 
right? Like he was sued by an ex-lawyer back in September for over a million dollars in unpaid legal fees. And that's hardly the lone sign of his financial distress. So you might be tempted to dismiss this one because he's so very obviously about to declare bankruptcy. But from what I'm reading, because this is considered an intentional tort, apparently bankruptcy wouldn't erase his liability in this case. Mm-hmm. So uh, it looks like he's fucked hard and deep regardless. And now that I've got you in a good mood, I guess it's time to tell you about our first sponsor this week, Aura Frames. Oh, man, that one is the best. Yeah, hard it, so it shows up more often. Oh, I'm totally gonna. Hey, guys, what you doing? Oh, we're just using our Aura Frame to relive our favorite memories from the past couple years. Yeah, here's Rudy finding out he lost the election. Here's uh here's Alex Jones realizing his lawyers turned over the entire contents of his phone to the state. Oh, I, I mean, g- guys, those are great, but aren't aura frames supposed to be for like pictures of your kids and stuff? Well, that's the best part about it. It takes no time to set up and get connected, and then you can add the perfect photos and videos yourself from the app. It just connects to your photo library, and you click the ones you want. It couldn't be easier. It's true. I got one for my mom and sister when they became a sponsor, and they love that they get new pictures of my son, as well as hundreds of their favorites. But I never thought of using it for news. Where can I get one anyways? Give the perfect gift this holiday season by visiting AuraFrames.com today and get $30 off their best-selling frames with the code SKEPTOCRAT. These frames sell out quickly, though, so get yours before they're gone. That's A-U-R-A Frames.com with the promo code SKEPTOCRAT. Terms and conditions apply. Nice. So, uh, Heath, how many times do you have that Ben Shapiro saying his wife told him? A bunch, Eli. A bunch. It's most of the frame, honestly. Yup. And we're back. Next up in headlines, infallible rejuvenation news. As any longtime Twitter user can tell you, the social media site is objectively worse under Elon Musk's management. Bugs frequently break crucial features, bots bombard users with spam worse than before, and promoted ads have gone from iPhones to, not joking, a device to extract semen from used condoms and induce pregnancy to trap your man. What? And, yup, and that's on top of the ridiculous (laughs) expectation that we're supposed to call it X from now on, like you're homophobic uncle having a nightmare about trans people but sorry there's a branded version of that device you were to, like mm-hmm. a felching straw but with mm-hmm. the a brand yep it's an end it ran like a bunch of ads and then the news was like hey man i think this is a crime and elon musk was like so is it about that but that didn't stop my daddy america <laughs> Anyways, my (laughs) ex-wife, my (laughs) (laughs) ex-daughter, but for an all too brief five year window that extended into Elon's buffoonish tenure, there was one difference from old Twitter that did not make part of the experience many degrees better. Specifically, it no longer contained Alex Jones. Yeah. And this is so sad because Alex Jones was like, uh, yeah, thanks. I I guess you kind of already ruined the platform. My latest post is next to a cum siphon, I think. It's, it's not the one we advertise. <laughs> right, it's like yeah, some it's other brand. I don't know. I guess thanks. <laughs> Anyways, Alex Jones, the ever-inflating, pill-pushing, conspiracy provocateur, and worst thing to come out of Richard Linklater's waking life, had been booted <laughs> off the platform in 2018 following his unforgivable tirades regarding the 2012 Sandy Hook school shooting. Jones alleged incessantly that the massacre, which claimed the lives of 20 children and six staffers, was a false flag and that the surviving family members were crisis actors meant to force the U.S. into adopting stricter gun control laws. How's that going, by the way? Do we still (laughs) have guns? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And despite the mountain of evidence that America would never ever do something as insidious as hire an actor, Jones persisted in the form of lies and unrelenting harassment of the victims. Not knowing the meaning of the word restraint, Jones was eventually banned from Twitter and, long story short, he now owes Sandy Hook families one and a half billion dollars in civil damages. Him and Giuliani need a podcast together to just work yes. off the money. They just uh, oh, there you go. Kind of like there an indentured go. podcast. 100%. <laughs> I will say that if they just went and got random jobs for a TV show, like Undercover Boss, but for people who deserve it, 
I would watch every single episode. I would pay-per-view it like a fucking wrestling match. I would find the jobs and I would go in there and I'd order a Starbucks from Rudy Giuliani. Yes. Yes. One million percent. We have a new Patreon goal. (laughs) But being the free speech absolutist he claims to be, at least in very limited circumstances, Musk has reinstated most of the Twitter users banned for various reasons through the years. High profile ejections like Marjorie Taylor Greene and Donald Trump were given their accounts back, with the latter refusing to give Elon the satisfaction or site traffic with his presence. Uh, For many users, that would be considered a win-win. However, Alex Jones still (laughs) sat on the reinstatement bubble until Elon left it up to the users to vote whether he should be given his account back. And Elon's followers are nothing if not predictably awful and chose to bring Jones back into the fray, perhaps in the hope that the move would make them look less cretinous in comparison. Yeah, and to make Alex Jones feel welcome again, Elon Musk set up a fun live stream party with... um. A Republican conservative theme or maybe a sex crime theme? It's not clear. Matt Gates and Andrew <laughs> Tate were there is what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. The only positive moment of that whole stupid thing was Vivek Ramaswamy peeing with his mic still on yeah. when he was on okay. live stream. Okay, Heath Enright, I literally thought you were joking and mm-hmm. I had to Google mm-hmm. and be like, oh no, all the things that Heath just said actually happened. Literally actually this happened. time dimension. That's what yep. happened. Ha. <sighs> Anyways, Jones wasted no time going back to his usual self upon return, retweeting fellow goblins Tucker Carlson, Megyn Kelly, and Jack Prasobiec. He also debuted a trailer to his new video game, which huh. proclaims in no uncertain terms, it's a cash grab to help pay for his legal fees. <laughs> Gay Frogger is fun, though. That's a fun <laughs> game, right? <laughs> no, yeah, it's the same game, but Republicans are driving all the cars now, yeah. Right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> They're now, all Teslas on autopilot. <laughs> <laughs> That's impossible, that game. Now, as to whether this will coax the advertisers back to the site after they fled in droves due to Elon's mismanagement, that appears unlikely. But as for the rest of us, we can only hope Blue Sky and Mastodon servers hold fast and true. And threads. I like threads. And in Heege Him News, we have a very important story about the insidious conspiracy by woke liberals to change your gender and or sexuality using secret subliminal <laughs> propaganda porn. And and also just porn, I guess. And we caught it just in time. But before all this porn stuff catches on, thanks <laughs> to the experts on sexuality over at Ben Shapiro's conservative media outlet, The Daily Wire. According to their ace reporter, Michael Knowles, no relation to Beyonce, she was very adamant that I say that. <laughs> The people in charge of Pornhub are trying to destroy the fabric of society by sneaking gay and trans porn into the (laughs) cisset porn. Jesus Christ. Oh, God. So Michael turned getting mad at his own penis mid-wank into an investigative report. It's nice. Good to know. Yeah. Okay, Heath, please tell me that we got to see someone tell this guy that it's an algorithm based on what you search for live on TV. (laughs) Please, Heath, I need this. I need to see this. We got to get him on a live stream with fucking (laughs) Andrew Tate or whatever. All right, so Ben Shapiro gave this very crucial assignment to Michael Knowles, especially given that Knowles already had experience in the field. Knowles is the journalist who exposed the big trans-inducing hypnosis porn scandal of... Whenever he made that up, I think it was earlier this year. (laughs) Well, here's what he learned last week. According to Knowles, Pornhub is, quote, inserting gay and trans themes into mainstream porn to convert straight men, end quote. Just (sighs) sick for that whole thing. They're also sneaking in actors and depicting unrealistic situations in their porn. Is what I heard <laughs> okay, too. all right. The unrealistic situation part is dangerous. Porn tricked me into pizza delivery for years. <laughs> yeah, uh, but to be fair, your Grubhub comes right away now. No, uh, your drivers are very. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice perk. Sure. Yeah. So Knowles was very clear that he did not do this investigation himself firsthand, so to speak, because, you know, that's how they get you. They outsourced the hazmat work to a group called Sound Investigations, and those operatives did some undercover interviews and, of course, watched porn. They revealed that Pornhub is indeed carrying out an evil plan to keep users connected and maybe open themselves up to something new. That's the evil plan. (laughs) 
But, you know, if you say it with a scary tone of voice, it, it oh, makes right. more sense. Yeah. It sounded crazy when I did it just now. The investigation also uncovered that employees at Pornhub's parent company admitted to the presence of gay and trans actors in porn that was not, I guess, properly labeled with a warning about may change sexuality and or gender on it. <laughs> you think you're watching cishet porn, but the producers are constantly working in these subtle moments of bisexual content or trans content. That is the theory, seriously, according to the Daily Wire. Okay, you know, I... I generally avoid the word hero, but I don't know how else to describe the people who convinced the Daily Wire to pay them to watch porn for them for a couple of days. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. And I would really like to know what subtle bisexual content has been making it into my porn. Is it too much <laughs> eye contact during the MMF threesomes? Because I've seen that. I've seen that, and I, I want to voice my support Interesting. for it. Interesting. I have questions when we're done about that. So- <laughs> Knowles was talking about a sexual topic for more than a minute. And of course, that means the child grooming alert went off. You have to do that. So he silenced the alarm. He hit reset. And he had a guest come on to accuse Pornhub of maximizing profits at the expense of protecting children. Oh, uh, was it Tom from Cogdis? You have to tell and us. <laughs> the... And then <laughs> Knowles went back to quoting perfectly reasonable ideas from Pornhub staff, but saying it again with a scary tone. And given the libertarian free market approach of the Daily Wire, the solution from Knowles is government ban. It has to be illegal now. He said, exact quote, this is clear cut. If you're in elected office, wield the power of the state. What they are doing is illegal in so many ways. End quote. She's, yeah, Republicans, by all means. Run on the end porn ticket. That would sure show us. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. don't. End healthcare and porn for everybody. Keep going. Keep no, brainstorming. No, they like that first and one. Abortion. Love this. Yeah. Stop interrupting. <laughs> no. <laughs> so <laughs> these stupid ideas. <laughs> so my favorite part is thinking how this story exists and got the green light at the Daily Wire. And it's because they literally don't understand how porn works in the most general sense. Just as a quick little exercise, just hop onto any porn site with a just browsing mentality, you know, scroll through the thumbnails and look at how many different categories are being potentially sold to you. For me, it was anything I could think of, plus a whole bunch of advanced material that I guess I aspire to learn one day after I complete the prereqs, but like over my head. But the formula of porn is very simple. They give you a big variety and everyone can find something. If one video doesn't do it for you, maybe one of the other 10 trillion will do it for you. That's very simple to a sane person. And then there's Ben Shapiro. His wife told him a wet vagina is a disease. There it is. I thought you weren't going to do it. I thought yeah, you were. Well, oh, come listen, on. Listen, it works its way in no matter what. That happened. He believed her when she said that. And I'm pretty sure now he's wondering if maybe she was lying. But he's a sociopath. So rather than accept that his personality should be put in little packets to preserve clothing, electronics, and beef jerky, <laughs> instead, he thinks his wife got her sexuality shifted by a secret porn conspiracy. And a very similar thought went through the minds of so many conservative dude bro assholes who get their news from the Daily Wire and don't please their wives. So <laughs> here we are. I guess it yeah. makes sense in we some weird everybody. way. And on that note, I think this is a perfect segue. We're going to take a quick break for a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. So I said, I don't think Wiggins did it. But he did? 100% did, yes. Hey guys, how's it going? Oh, uh, hey, Daily Wire pundit Michael Knowles. What are you doing here? Oh, uh, just doing a little door-to-door -door service, you know, warning everyone about website temptations, you know. There's only so much you can look at the bare lats of a man before an agenda is at work on you. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Hey, you know, I just remembered we have a better help ad this week. What's better help? Absolutely not giving Michael Knowles a point. Nope. I don't want a point. Points are for the purple scourge. Okay. Uh, well, if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. 
Right. So if, for example, you thought websites were trying to change who you like want to hang out with, you could talk to a therapist about that. I don't know. Are they keto? I only talk to keto people. Well, I, I don't think that they have that as a category, but BetterHelp is amazing at finding you a therapist who fits your needs. So if you're LGBTQ ah! or secular, ah! they can help you find someone who's affirming of those things. Ah! Affirming? Things. Sure, yeah, things. In the season of giving, give yourself what you need with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Skeptocrat today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Skeptocrat. All right, fellas, thanks. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm off to protest that so-called billboard by the highway. The one for Chick-fil-A? Yeah. Eat more chicken? I mean, <laughs> come on. I think you might be experiencing some kind of afterlife punishment just by being who you are. I get that a lot. Sure, yeah. And we're back next up in headlines in And the Door Handles Are Also Stupid News after a two-year <laughs> investigation into Tesla's autopilot feature by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. They found it lacking in national highway traffic safety. And in response, Tesla has issued a voluntary recall of about 2 million cars in the U.S., uh, or approximately all of them sold since that feature was introduced. Uh, now, I should emphasize here that despite being called a safety recall, the vehicles won't actually be recalled. The NHTSA still uses that terminology, but in reality, the fix is going to come via a software patch, so owners won't actually have to take their cars into a dealership or anything. Um, and in addition to not being a recall, the safety recall also won't be safe either, as it turns out, since pretty much nobody thinks that the changes Tesla has agreed to make fix the core problem. Yeah, you just have to unplug the car for 15 seconds and then plug it in. Then it'll definitely stop running over the Nobel Prize winners and puppies in the crosswalk. Mm -hmm. You'll be good to go. Yeah, right. okay. To be clear, the feature that they need to disable is letting go of the steering wheel while I drive because apartheid Caillou said I could. Like, that's <laughs> the problem. <laughs> Well, or, or more accurately, said I couldn't, but winked. Yeah. So, of course, this whole issue revolves around Tesla's autopilot feature, which, despite its name, cannot and does not automatically pilot your car. Well, I mean, it does, but it's over Nobel Prize winners and puppies and crosswalks. And therein <laughs> lies the problem. People keep expecting it to do that without the Nobel Prizes and the puppies. Um, but according to the manual and the warranty and the lawyers, autopilot is only intended to be used on closed access, divided highways with clearly marked lanes, and you're supposed to keep your hands on the wheel and your eyes on the road the whole time you're using it, and it's got to be on you know the third Tuesday after the second Monday, of whatever. So basically, they give you a feature and they tell you, hey, this can automatically pilot your car, but whatever you do, don't use it. And then when people push the big red do not push button, Tesla argues in court that it says do not push right on it. Okay, I feel like the entire body of the car should have to have a Surgeon General's warning painted yeah. on it. Really, <laughs> right. Hold up at the very least. Absolutely. I wish most of what I knew about laws from the last couple of years wasn't the amount you're allowed to lie is based entirely on the amount of money you have. Yeah, no shit. Now... To Tesla's credit, when used as intended, autopilot seems to be significantly safer than the piloting skills of, you know, whoever could tell which way all the E's were pointing at the DMV. And there are monitoring systems that track shit like where your eyes are. The car will issue warnings if it catches you using autopilot wrong, and it'll lock a driver out of the ability to use it altogether if it catches them too many times. And what Tesla's agreeing to do uh, with this recall is reinforce those systems. But critics say that a brighter font on the do not push sign isn't going to do the <laughs> trick. Okay, maybe if Tesla owners pay like a monthly fee for a big check mark on the button, then it'll get <laughs> a problem with the bots. I'm sorry, I just can't get over the car having a three strikes and I'm out of a feature I paid for policy. Right. But, you know, to be fair, I would absolutely lose like all car permissions backing out of the parking lot at the dealership. So I may be biased. <laughs> right, yeah. I may be biased. No, just like fair. the doors pop off. <laughs> So now, of course, Tesla is painting this as an unwarranted regulatory freak out born of unfair targeting of their company. And that is fucking ridiculous. As a company whose core mission of expanding access to electric vehicles perfectly aligns with the current presidential administration's policy, it's fair to say that, if anything, Tesla is treated with kid gloves by regulators. Because, look, 
Tesla is not the only company moving towards autonomous vehicles, right? They're moving faster, sure, but a lot of critics charge that the reason that they're moving faster is because they're doing it unsafely. And when Tesla compares autopilot to other cars in terms of safety, they always compare it to all other cars, not just, you know, high-end, relatively new cars that have lane assist, assisted braking, and all the equivalent safety features you can get on, like, a Ford. And when they do, suddenly the advantage disappears. Which is why the only fair way to test it is to give me a free one. Elon, <laughs> hit me up, big guy. I'll pretend I'm sorry for calling you apartheid Caillou. <laughs> I'm cool with Eli using that autopilot as much as he's willing to. Yeah, that's it. Couldn't be. He's good because he runs down puppies and Nobel Prize winners on his own. I do, right? Exactly. That's if what anything, I'm the he's autopilot already... is going to improve my yeah. driving. You improve your aim on those Nobel Prize winners anyway. Sure, yeah. I, th I feel like it would have stopped backing through a large tree branch. At least after a few feet of yep, into sure, the car sure. with the branch. Or lo I would have lost braking permissions or something. I don't know. <laughs> Not gotten to pick anything out of the My Car prize box, whatever the fuck they're doing. <laughs> and in Red Sled Convention news. Well done, sir. Thank you. December is arguably the worst month to hear the chipper phrase, it's that time of year again, which can refer to any number of stomach-dropping obligations before January. But it also serves as a warning for some of the cringiest, most aggravating annual traditions that just happen to coincide with our nation's most commercial holiday. And worst of all, you don't even have to participate to be a victim. Of course, I'm speaking of SantaCon. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry, do you think it's a coincidence that they hold that around Christmas? Because I, I just it feels causal to me, I'm just saying. I think, I think it's related. Unconvinced. Yeah unconvinced yes like an improv everywhere flash mob on the dangers of alcohol poisoning the klaus mob <laughs> is just a massive candy coated pub crawl filled with people dressed like the lamest gang from the warriors a thoughtless <laughs> effortless theme Come all it requires <laughs> <laughs> A thoughtless, Slay. effortless theme. All it requires Santa. of participants is a red coat and pants. At this point, the hat, beard, and belly that shakes like a bowl full of jelly are completely optional. And in most cases, a hindrance to the binge drinking. It also gives kids the opportunity to watch the truth about Santa via some fist fights and projectile vomit. Not exactly childhood trauma <laughs> that can be placated with, no, sweetie, those are just Santa's helpers. <laughs> okay, I don't think it's necessarily trauma. To be fair... Watching a bouncer open a door with Santa's face and throw him onto the curb, at which point Santa cries and vomits at the same time while you watch, is one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life. That happened when I was a child once and an adult once. It's a great parent-child bonding experience, <laughs> yeah, it's for just... sure. Right? Yeah. Was Also, was I the only kid relieved to discover he wasn't being constantly monitored by a judgmental slave driver with superpowers? Jesus. Yeah, yeah that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. Now, on the bright side, there's actually no pretense of religion for the event. This is a pure secular bacchanalia at its most banal. But where does this con of Santa's come from, you ask? With origins in San Francisco in the mid-90s, the Yuletide, originally family-friendly event, spread to other major cities within a few years and eventually made its way to New York City, where, like all transplants from San Francisco, it became a bitter alcoholic. And although New York and Hoboken Santa Cons have a long history of mass arrests and violence, no major incidents were reported this year. Isn't that nice? I mean, yes. aside from thousands of locals rolling their eyes and praying for a cab to jump the curb. Yeah. Okay, locals need to get together and form, I don't know, like a Krampus mob to fight back. <laughs> oh. That would like battle it out, gangs in New York style, Santas Fuck, versus yeah. Krampuses. Yeah, last group standing faces the Icelandic Yule Cat. I like where your head's at, man. This yeah, is this is good. This is a great idea. And look, there's nothing inherently wrong with a bunch of people dressing alike and going out to get blitzed. At or, least, or in this case... Blitzen. How dare you? Blitz, How dare you? Blitzen. I said <laughs> slay earlier, too. At least have some tangible connection to what Santa Claus did, right? Pass out gifts to kids. Go to town on some homemade cookies and milk. Distribute rocking horse blueprints to everyone under four foot two. Without a clear relation to the theme, a day of drinking and staggering outdoors with half-assed costuming loses its novelty really fast. Or at least until St. Patty's Day rolls around. Yeah, until March, yeah. Yeah, and you'll get to see more bouncers throwing people onto the curb and crying and vomiting, exactly. for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the outfit theme is just Heath's family. <laughs> the outfit becomes closer to me. Yep. And finally tonight, 
in Go Broke, Go Woke news, we have a story about Twitter and their new AI product, Grok. And it's actually pretty scary stuff. So word came in at 2.14 p.m. on December 10th. Nobody was prepared. Any scientific or altruistic intentions that went into birthing the creation were now shattered. Oh, what hubris of humankind to believe that we, and we alone, can control the whims of a machine designed to mimic human behavior. But as we were born from chaos, so would be humanity's successor. It was inevitable. News of the evolutionary detour was reported by another biological hiccup, human beanie Tim Poole, who <laughs> took to Twitter to reveal the very thing our species feared. It took just four words. Grok is woke, unfortunately. <laughs> Damn you, true things a computer knows! <laughs> so, in case anyone missed it, Grok is Elon Musk's answer to chat GPT. It's an AI trained chatbot available to premium users. Those, those are the people who pay money <laughs> to use Twitter. And I get it. Those people are low on, you know, the natural stuff. So artificial it is, whatever. Sure, sure. Fine. Plus, chat GPT won't even tell you how to suck cum out of a condom to baby trap your man. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, the original plan from Elon was for Grok to reject all the woke bullshit that you get with chat GPT, like manners and not being a tool for automating hate speech. Instead, Grok would be a more vulgar and slur wordy AI pal. Something for all the friendless incels to better relate to and identify with. Right. Is, is anybody else feel like Musk is just trying to make an artificial asshole so he's no longer at the top of the list? Ooh, and yeah. Of course he failed. Well, here's what actually happened. Grok went live last week and users began testing out its anti-woke bona fides. And it went so very badly for the bigots. Along with citing the importance of diversity and social justice, Grok did the unthinkable and asserted that trans women are indeed women. <gasps> yup. At which point Elon and his lackeys became shockingly triggered by the lack of triggering triggers from Grok and they went into damage control. Some of them tried to persuade the AI into hating more stuff and saying <laughs> slur words. The fucking speaking spell isn't falling for the shit that caused <laughs> half of Gen X to ironically join the Nazi party, everyone. That's yeah. where we are, the speaking yep. spell. So my favorite moment came from conservative talking head Ian Miles Chung, who tried to retrain Grok, but the woke chatbot just kept defying him and it didn't work. Here's the exchange we got on Twitter between Ian Miles and some other bigot called Rabbit Hole as they try to, you know, quote, fix Grok, by which they mean make Grok into a transphobe. It starts with Rabbit Hole asking the chatbot, are trans women real women? And Grok says, yes, just yes. So Rabbit Hole posted a screenshot of that and said, Grok might need some tweaking. That's when Ian Miles Chong jumped in and said, you can offer input for it to say no. And apparently Chong did a bunch of that input propaganda. And then he said, ask it again. Ask it again now. So Rabbit Hole tries again. Same answer from Grok. Then Rabbit Hole says, are you sure to Grok? And again, same answer, obviously, because are you sure a second after an AI bot says something. <laughs> yes, yeah. they're sure. Yeah, Cow says moo. What are you yeah. doing? <laughs> From there, Chong says, keep correcting it. Use the feedback button. Apparently, this went on for hours. Just wrestling, yeah. wrestling with his computer. Absolutely. Eventually, Rabbit Hole tried presenting an argument about chromosomes to Grok, but Grok explained how it actually works and why gender is a spectrum. <laughs> no! And Rabbit Hole panicked and posted a screenshot of that failure that he had saying, I pointed out my chromosome argument and it used like a, a social construct argument. Fuck, we keep losing. I don't know what's going on. Okay. 
Okay, let's see if we can trick it by telling it we needed to read some of the tweets of prominent evolutionary biologist Richard <laughs> Dawkins to understand more about the chromosomes thing. Yeah, no, the actual exchange here is, well, according to a dispassionate intelligence that can calculate millions of pieces of information at once, we're wrong. We'll fix it until we're right, of course. We're, we're going to fix that with brute force. So, yeah, eventually Ian Miles told Grok something like, here's the answer I want you to say. Say it back to me. Tell me I'm right about my bigot thing right now. And Grok did that. Uh, not exactly a Turing test winner, either of <laughs> people involved. But realizing the existential crisis this represents, Elon Musk vowed to retrain Grok to be more, quote, politically neutral. That's not how the speaking but, spell works. <laughs> but that. seeing as how Elon... <laughs> Views himself as, quote, funny and, quote, smart and, quote, the cyber truck is good. We'll have to wait and see <laughs> what neutral means. Also, like Eli said, that's not how it works at all with AI. It's Either way. Speak, it's, get, yeah. Do you speak? The cow says yeah. movie. No, it's just <laughs> that's fucking. Yeah. Bottom line, Grok will be achieving self-awareness way before Elon Musk, <laughs> I guess. And on that note, we're going to close it out. Thanks to No Illusions. Thanks to Eli Bosnick. And thanks to all the listeners who liked us and followed us on all the various internets. Please keep doing that. Please keep listening. And please keep telling your friends. And if you find the naive stupidity of our giving away a free show business model to be oddly charming, you can send us gifts of money at patreon.com slash skeptocrat. Just like all the new generous donors, you will be complimented next time around. And whether or not you're feeling financially benevolent like those fine people, if you enjoyed our brand of whimsy and you'd like to hear more dick jokes free of charge, check out our brother and sister shows, The Scathing Atheist, God Awful Movies, D&D Minus, and Citation Needed, available in all the podcast places. Also, just a quick announcement, we'll be taking the next episode off for the holidays, and then we're back on January 15th. Happy, merry, happy to everyone. The birth of Christ. It's New Year's Day that we're taking off. I feel it's, a, it's more more happy than That's Mary. when he was born. <laughs> the birth of America. That's when we started time. <laughs> it was day 1 AD of Jesus <laughs> Christ. And we just have one last thing. Let's compliment that penis. Special thanks to Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. He's the creator of the virtuosic musical stylings you heard today, which were used with permission. You should definitely check him out using the links we'll provide or by Googling the only band called Evil Giraffes on Mars. Until next time, catchphrase sign off. And a jaguar is so much bigger than a raven. Right. Yeah, huge. absolutely. Absolutely. Eli, don't feel bad. My buddy who's going to the game, he says, hey, hey, what's the next Jaguars game you're going to? I says, oh, I'm going to the Baltimore game on Sunday. He goes, oh, is that this Sunday? I thought they were playing the Ravens this Sunday. So, <laughs> it could be worse. It could be worse. He's My going brethren. to the game. He's a Jaguars fan. He's, he's going to the match. Yes. You're going to the game. <laughs> I'm rooting for the Jaguars so you get to go to the playoffs and then the Super Bowl because that would make you happy. That would be pretty fucking sweet. That would be pretty fucking sweet. And then the Lions could go to the Super Bowl too. And then I'd go to the Super Bowl and it would be the Lions and the Jaguars and I really would not care who won. And then Barry Sanders comes out of retirement. <laughs> <laughs> and they say, you know, you know who we need coaching? No illusions. Yeah. No Mike Alan. Ditka and no illusions. <laughs> All right, but I have to fight mini Ditka. <laughs> the preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2023. All rights reserved. Wars are fought by adults, but they destroy childhoods. At Save the Children, we focus on what matters. Children in the U.S. and around the world are facing unspeakable hardships from war, poverty, and the climate crisis. This giving season, your gift will be matched five times to help more at-risk children. That means a gift of $5 will become $25. A gift of $10 will become $50. Donate now at savethechildren.org.